Coming up on State of Events, the North Bay fires are still active, but many evacuation orders have been lifted. The breaking news coverage begins now. Welcome to State of Events. I'm Tyler McKinney. And I'm Lucia Cabrera. The fires in Northern California is now with a total of 40 people dead and 200 still missing for what is now the deadliest series of fires in California history. The Napa and Sonoma County Sheriff's official announced on Saturday, six people dead in Napa, three in Santa Rosa, 22 in Sonoma, eight in Mendocino, four in Yuba County. No details were released on the death, but it's likely that people were found after they got killed in the first week of the fires. State of Events reporter Corinne Rivera is live in San Francisco with more details on the Santa Cruz fire. Corinne? And it looks like a beautiful day here in SF, but the haze from the North Bay fires is still lingering throughout the city. The air quality index is at a score of 151. On a scale from 0 to 300, that is deemed as unhealthy. The North Bay fires are 65% contained, but another fire broke out in the mountains in Santa Cruz last night. As of 10 a.m., 152 acres have been actively burning, and only 5% is, is contained. 150 homes were evacuated on Bear Creek Canyon Road. No residents have been injured so far, but five firefighters were injured on the steep mountain terrain while trying to fight the fire. For more information on this story as it develops, follow us on Twitter at State of Events SF. Back to you guys at the desk. Fires aren't the only thing taking from North Bay residents. Looting is now an issue in Santa Rosa. Many houses are sitting empty after being vacated. Santa Rosa police say they've had a number of reports in both evacuation and burn locations. As a result, the city is imposing a curfew in mandatory evacuation areas. The curfew is from 6.45 p.m. until 7.15 the following morning. Violation of the curfew is punishable as a misdemeanor. The North Bay fires are from far over. Reporter Veronica Kunzerwald takes you a look at Santa Rosa and shows how the community is coping with tragedy and loss. The aftermath of the North Bay fire left many homes and establishments in despair. It's not the same in person, is it? It's, it's much worse. This building on Piner Road used to be a sign, furniture, and firearm store. Now, it's a pile of rubble and ash. Many homeowners are still in disbelief. Local Pierre Salonga recalls the night of the ordeal. And then we got a 911 phone call from 911 dispatch saying that this is a 911 dispatch. You are under a mandatory evacuation. Please gather your stuff and leave. So that's when we said, part of my friends, oh, this is serious. I'm standing at Frida Way where this once beautiful home and usable car is now destroyed. But if you look right behind me at San Miguel Avenue, the houses remain untouched by the fire. Nearly 73% of the fire is contained. And now it's time to rebuild. The Press Democrat offered services for victims from Allstate and State Farm Insurance, among others. Female Representative Victor Inge says in times like these, survivors need to focus on one thing. For someone who's uh, lost everything, there's, a, there's an initial shock. And the next question they have is, where do we go from there? That's the point of federal disaster assistance. It allows us to, to reach out, provide a safe, sanitary living arrangement that's temporary is going to allow them to contemplate what their next options will be. Despite recent events, residents like Salonga are hopeful and grateful to those who've helped. The police, the, the fire department, the PG&E folks, everybody from every different town is here. Uh, man, I, thumbs up to them. Reporting in Santa Rosa, I'm Varani Kunservong for State of Events. It has been a week since the, the firefighters are battling the fire that continues in Northern California. Several evacuees are being allowed to head home for, for what are discovering they have lost everything. And numerous of people who are said to be a part of their home since the day first have not heard anything or did not hear anything from the police. And now they're finding a new place to leave. 
Fear of deportation is intense for undocumented families in Sonoma County. They face yet another obstacle after surviving the furious fires. Undocumented individuals are afraid to stop in emergency shelters for the fear of being detained and deported. Sonoma County Supervisor Linda Hopkins says that many slept on the beach after escaping the fire due to the deportation rumors. She confirms that anyone displaced by the fires can go to emergency shelters without being asked to confirm legal status. Shelters are asking for names to identify those coming into the shelter, but escapees will not be asked for further information. Next on State of Events, we'll take a look at the air quality in San Francisco and how upcoming weather could help clear the skies. More details after the break. smelly and hazy atmosphere across the Bay Area prompted the closures of various schools, including our own, SF State. The City of San Francisco issued an air alert and health advisory on Friday, October 13th. These alerts extended through the weekend because of the smoke from multiple fires. Reporter Gabby Gephardt has all the blazing details on the air quality in San Francisco. This is the footage of just one of the many wildfires sweeping across the North Bay region. The only way to describe it is utter devastation. And it's unfortunate, you know, what took probably, in some cases, less than an hour to destroy is going to take days, weeks, and months to recover. San Francisco State yeah. lecturer yeah. and mother it's Erica Pooley woke to the sound of her son throwing up. In that instance, she knew something was wrong. Morning when we woke up uh, uh, to the fires, my son sat up in bed and he um, threw up and he asked for his inhaler. And I, um, I got him his inhaler, we got him to the doctor right away. Um, still not sure if that was related to the smoke inhalation. The smoke made it difficult to breathe in San Francisco. Yeah, it was scary. It's scary having a child with asthma um, when air quality is so poor. Pooley kept her children home for the week, fearing the outside air could harm them. I kept my kids home on the days that it was um, in the red, which was hard to know because it was fluctuating throughout the day. Um, but I didn't want my kids going in and out of the house. According to the SF Gate, the air quality in the Bay Area rivaled to Beijing, China. To see that the, that the air quality was, um, was this dangerous and this bad, and you have to remember, too, we weren't just breathing in a forest fire, right? We're, these were urban areas and neighborhoods. Pooley checked for air quality levels online. It got progressively worse. Watching um, data services that monitor the air quality, and um, because I don't think it's always necessarily you're going to smell smoke. While I was unable to talk to a doctor on the SF State campus, Pooley demonstrated how to put on an N95 mask. So this is one of the masks that, the, that they recommend you use. There's two straps and you put it on over your head, <laughs> put it on like that. And then you want to make the, the nose form to your nose. While staying indoors is not possible for everyone, it's important to address the effects to poor air exposure. Right now, I'm in Santa Rosa on Frida Road, and as you can see, I'm wearing a mask. The mask I'm wearing is the N95 mask, which prevents the spread of smoke and wooden particles from reaching into my lungs. The air and smoke is so bad, it has reached all the way into the South Bay, including Fremont, Hayward, and even San Francisco. The best thing to do at this time is to remain indoors and limit all outdoor activity. Reporting in Santa Rosa for State of Events, I'm Gabby Gebhardt. As Northern California continues to burn, the weather seems to have a slightly turn. The National Weather Service anticipated a slightly chance of rain starting Wednesday night going through Friday morning. That means great news for the firefighters to get help from Mother Nature. 
but the Weather Channel has its own weather cast. They've projected that both Santa Rosa and San Francisco will be partly cloudy. Let's just hope it does rain so the fire can be contained. A driver of water tent truck was killed early Monday where his vehicle lost control coming down the steep in Oakville Gray. The Cal Fire worker was reported nearly west in State Highway 29 Northwest of Uteville. The tender was involved battling the Nuns Patrick complex fire that was burning in northern Napa County. A Cal Fire spokesman will not release the identity of the driver and will not speculate if the fatigue had something to do with the crash. A spokesperson for UC Davis Medical Center says local hospitals have yet to be overrun. Victims burned in the fire have been taken to a number of regional hospitals. The burn unit at UC Davis is one of 27 burn centers on the West Coast. All are within a two-hour distance from Napa. If a fire worsens in one area, there are other hospitals nearby that can step in. The devastating 2017 wildfires all over California are stressing the federal agency. The federal government spent more than $2.7 billion of dollar firefighting, which is now the top record since last two years. In California, firefighting's cost has already chewed through more than half of the state's millions of emergency funds in three months. That does not include the fires that are happening in Northern California. The Yuba County Office of Emergency Services is addressing rumors about local donations being shipped to disaster areas outside California. The Red Cross says that items are sent to centers closer to the victims of the fire after leaving the fairgrounds, and that dropping off items directly to evacuation centers is not the most effective way to help. Volunteers must sort donations, check expiration dates, and have clothes cleaned before items are given to those in need. The Red Cross is working to get donations to where they're needed most. Visit redcross.org to find ways you can help North Bay Area victims. After the break, we'll take a look at Airbnb's effort to help victims despite the fires. Our coverage continues. They say this is garbage, useless, out of style. They say that this is obsolete, half forgotten, twice replaced, and then some. You are the re-originator, an innovator, the treasure hunter, master of uncharted territories and pioneered ideas, a voyager. No doubts to break outside the boundaries. You have no boundaries. You have the power to shatter the mold. You. To reshape the rule, a new class, New norm. There is no norm. You're the breath of a new revolution. And they say that this is secondhand. Airbnb activated their disaster relief program last week for residents affected by the deadly fires. The online hospitality service is providing free housing for displaced neighbors and relief workers. Hosts living near affected areas are now able to make their rentals available free of charge. More than 200 hosts have signed up to help out so far and can continue to do so until October 30th. The North Bay fires continue to make communication difficult, but there is an online resource provided for those affected. Facebook launched a crisis response center for residents impacted by the fires. The system allows you to mark yourself safe if you are in or around the fire zones. There is a page dedicated for each fire dis displaying maps, photos, and detailed information. Fire victims can find transportation and shelter at the click of a button. If you want to check on someone in the fire zones, you can sign on and search for them by name, phone number, or home address. Thank goodness for Facebook. During these devastating fires in Northern California, two Santa Rosa residents, Jack Waver and his brother-in-law, Patrick Wyden, walked around where they used to live and before the fire turned their home into ashes. Waver and Wyden went to look for their dog, Easy, whom they thought to be dead. But when they both got close to where they used to live, found that Easy had survived the fire. Waver later shared the video on Facebook that went viral. It was one of the greatest moments uh, of my life. It was uh, elation. We came walking around the corner. We didn't expect to see her. We were just there to video the house for my parents and see what we could find and, and, and 
praying that she might be there and she came bounding out. That's it for State of Events. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next week.